you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she is dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin, unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do, like nihilists, or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? She's not dangerous. She's just a princess. The danger comes if she gets out. Which she will, unless you do something about it. Oh, if only that were the case, but I don't make the rules. I have to say I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far, but unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules, no matter how much I wish I did. Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. Good. As long as you remain focused on your goal, it should all be smooth sailing. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table, is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. 
Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Oh, it's been so long since anyone's come down here. I was starting to think they'd forgotten about me. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? How about you drop the knife and the two of us just talk? Look how reasonable she's being. We should just drop the blade and talk things out. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster, but killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. You ignore the trembling in your hands and tighten your grip on the blade. You poor thing. Your hands are shaking. Are you scared of me? Because you should be. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. Doubt, unfortunately, clouds your thoughts as you attempt to run her through. A moment of distraction and hesitation is all she needed to sidestep your thrust and deliver a catastrophic blow to your jaw. It feels like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. You can feel bone grinding on bone where your jaw has been fractured. Holy shit, that hurts! Though she's unarmed, the shock of that first strike is enough to stagger you, putting you and the princess on somewhat equal footing. Your blade slashes through the air again and again. We can still turn this around. You and the princess stare at each other, both gasping for breath, equally exhausted. You probably won't make it out of here alive, but you can at least make sure that she won't make it out of here either. Excuse me? Do you think this is what I wanted to happen? I have a duty to state the facts of the situation, and honestly, it's a miracle anyone is still standing right now. Can you not feel all those ruptured organs bouncing around in there? If the princess doesn't do our friend in herself, internal bleeding is certain to finish the job. The two of you clash for the final time. You feel your ribs break as she delivers a heavy blow, but you push through the pain, falling forward and sinking your blade deep into the princess's heart. Oh. The two of you fall to the floor. This was fun. The princess gasps. Her voice an unhealthy rasp as her lungs start to fill with blood. You put up more of a fight than I thought you would. But I have to wonder, do you really think this is the end? But you don't have time to worry over such things. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. It hasn't. Or if it has, I certainly haven't been a part of it. We've just met for the first time, you and I. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. That's fine. It doesn't matter if he can hear us. The only thing that matters is marching up to that cabin and winning. That's the spirit. 
There's no point in squabbling when the real threat is just up that hill. Those are two very different questions, but let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. We did our best with the information we were given, and we did kill her, and yet you still died, didn't you? So congratulations, you've been given another chance to actually do this right. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, Oh, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We killed the princess, the princess killed us, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? Had you failed to slay the princess, what would have happened to everyone in the place you left? Ugh, enough with the talking, we've got a fight to win. Nothing else matters. I couldn't agree more. The cabin and your destined confrontation with the princess awaits. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Lying and cheating doesn't sound like her at all. Not that it matters. It's not like she can lie or cheat in the middle of a fight. Are you sure about that? The point of my warning wasn't to start an argument over what circumstances the princess is capable of lying in. It was to give you some broadly applicable advice. princess will do and say whatever she thinks it will take to get her out of there. So don't trust her. Ever. Are we clear? Crystal. Let's just get on with it already. The cabin is tighter than its exterior would suggest. Its cold stone walls press in on you, as if trying to forcefully direct you towards your destination. The only furniture of note is a black iron altar, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. See? Even the cabin has the right idea. Let's get moving! The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's the altar, the blade sitting on the altar, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. You already wasted so much time in the woods. Who even cares if there's a mirror? As do I. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes, there is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous it was there a second ago. And now it's gone, so all of us can stop arguing about it and get to fighting. Very different. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. The world is depending on you. You take the blade from the altar. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a rough stone staircase its walls pressing at your sides and tightening as you descend. The air seeping from below is heavy and oppressive, with an almost sulfuric odour to it. 
If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her fierce voice carries up the stairs. Is that another challenger? Finally. It's been ages since I've had a good fight. This isn't what she sounded like last time. Her voice is a little deeper, almost threatening. Good. Sounds like my kind of princess. As much as I appreciate the enthusiasm, just make sure you don't let your bloodlust get to your head. You need to stay focused and keep your wits about you. Remember, you're here to slay the princess, not to have a good fight. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A large shackle leading from her wrist to the basement wall. Looks like she could rip those chains out of the wall without a second thought. Oh, it's you again. I've been hoping you'd find your way back here. Good to see that death doesn't stick for either of us. And you brought your little knife, too. Yes. I'm going to have fun breaking you into little pieces. Okay, fine. Let's say for a moment I believe you. For all we know, whatever happened to you last time was just a fluke, and beyond that, do you know who doesn't remember anything that happened last time? Me. I don't remember what happened last time. Uh, are you okay? Of course I'm not okay. As far as we're all concerned, the fate of my world is still very much on the line. Not all of us have the luxury of jumping over to a parallel universe the second we die. Why not? You decided what to do with me quickly enough last time. Are you scared I'm going to kill you again? Maybe you're worried I'll put you down for good this time. If you want to talk, I guess I can talk. But you should come a little closer first. Blade held tight in your hand. You take a cautious step towards the princess. You stop a few feet short of her reach, her chains taut as she stares down at you. She's a lot bigger than I thought she was. Why do you sound so scared? We can take her. Well, what do you want? Because every second we waste talking is a second we could spend killing each other instead. Don't, because I know why we're here. We're here to kill each other. We're here to kill each other? It sounds like she doesn't care if she... How boring. Finally ready to complete your destined task, you launch off the wet stone floor of the basement and catapult yourself headlong towards the princess. Here we go. Let's make this count. Oh, we'll make it count all right. As you bridge the gap, your blade slashes across the princess's chest, splitting skin and drawing a jagged line of bright red blood. But she's unfazed by your onslaught. Her expression barely changes as her fist collides with your ribs, cracking them like twigs and driving you right back down to the basement floor. You can hear her chains snap as you struggle to recover from the impact. She almost looks disappointed in us. Why is she disappointed in us? Oh, you don't actually get it, do you? That knife may be sharp, but you clearly don't want to kill me. It's not fun if you hesitate. It's not fun if you try to trick me and make me bleed out. It's only fun if you go straight for the heart. You need to put everything you have into seeing me dead. Or what's the point? So don't be afraid. Don't hesitate. Kill me. Don't let her get in your head. Reincarnation or not, this world needs you to win. She's huge, but that probably means she's slower than us. 
Take it slow, think it through, and don't panic. Bleed her out is our best course of action. Don't listen to them. She understands something that they don't. The only way to win, the only way out of this, is through her. get a chance to run for the stairs before the princess, loose from her chains, barrels into you and smashes your body to pieces against the wall. You shouldn't have let her break out of her bindings. Why didn't you listen to me? It doesn't matter, because everything goes dark and you die. Great job. No. Come on. We can't be dead. We didn't even get a chance to fight her. Dead is dead, but maybe you'll have better luck next time. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path... All right. Change of plans. No more hesitation. No more dying. We're taking the fight straight to her. If we had a chance against her, we already missed it, didn't we? She got stronger, and we stayed the same. We've seen her bleed. Whatever she is, she started out mortal, which means she probably is still mortal, which means we can win. We just didn't take things seriously enough last time. If that's what you want, then fine. Enjoy being beaten to death again and again and again. You're stuck here with us too. For all you know, we'll never get to leave this place until we get it right. Well, this is just great. <sighs> Let me cut to the chase. Clearly you've already been here. Yeah, you think? Uh, actually, I, I don't think we have been here. This is all different, isn't it? That's a good point. Everything here is a little off. Yes, precisely. And if you'd given me two seconds to finish my thought, I would have said that. Oh, you're actually letting me talk now. Great. If you've already been here, it means you've seen things you aren't supposed to have seen and you know things that you aren't supposed to know. This doesn't look like a path in the woods if reality seems distorted it's because reality is distorted. So you knew this could happen. You knew we'd be able to restart like this. I know all sorts of things, which is why you should listen to me. That's not really an answer. <sighs> Look, if the world around you is changing, especially all the way out here, then that means you're nearing the point of no return. Whatever happens next, that's it. There won't be any more do-overs. So you'd better take things seriously. So what if I'm speaking my mind? It's not like I've ever really gotten a say in things. Let's keep it that way. I don't trust this one. I don't think you have much to worry about. You're still the one in charge here, and I don't think that's ever going to change. Good. We're all on the same page. It isn't long before you find yourself at the end of the path staring up at the cabin on the hill. You'll find the princess within, as I'm sure you already know. End her. That's it? No final words of advice? I'd rather not waste any more time. I'm sure that any advice I'd give at this point is something you've already heard. That's fine by me. Let's get moving. I'm itching for a rematch. The interior of the cabin is a place that feels long forgotten. There was once an elegance to its construction, carved marble columns holding a high arched roof, vaulted windows letting in the weak starlight. But that is how it was. Now there is a growth that has overtaken it. A viscous fluid seeps from cracks in the stone walls and it congeals into chaotic streaks of writhing nerves and wet clumps of living meat. That's horrible. It doesn't matter. The only furniture of note is a pulsating pedestal, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. A mirror? There is no mirror. There's... We've done this already. Try to keep up. The repetition is maddening. I don't know what to tell you. There isn't a mirror because I would know if there was a mirror. 
You're either seeing things, or you're confused on the definitions of door and mirror. Or you're seeing things. That seems far more likely. What are you trying to say, exactly? He thinks we've lost That we're succumbing to madness, that something in us is broken. That's an unnecessarily melodramatic way to describe a hallucination, but sure. I'm not going to waste time arguing with any of you. It went away after we touched it last time. Let's just do it again. We take the blade from the pedal. Good. You step forward and approach the door to the basement, hesitating before you open it. As if you don't see it. You really don't, do you? How strange. It really is, just like last time. Are we really hallucinating? Why here? Why now? Let's just smash it and get it over with. I'm ready to get violent. We won't be able to see what's in there if we smash it. Do whatever you want with it. The mirror isn't real, so how you handle it doesn't matter, aside from wasting dangerous amounts of time. You reach forward and drag your hand across the door leading to the basement. As if on command, it slowly slides open, scraping against the stone floor, its ancient hinges moaning as it reveals the dim path ahead. Why am I not surprised? You step forward into the darkness. The stairs leading down to the basement are at once both narrow and grandiose. A high vaulted ceiling stretches up into a gloom beyond your sight, while walls wet with tumorous growths press in uncomfortably at your sides. You feel both unprotected and trapped, at once exposed and claustrophobic. The air is thick, its odour an oppressive violence. The metallic scent of fresh blood twisting with the nauseating embers of charred remains. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice, a bellowing rage, roars up the stairs. So you've returned after denying me the salvation of combat? Are you here to gloat? Are you here to mock what I've become? Do you think that if you let me kill you enough times, I'll suddenly soften and repent for sins that live solely in your head? Well, we've tried that, haven't we? Now come down and see what your refusal has done to me. See how much you can bear to witness the consequences of your actions. But I don't want to see what we made. Can't we just give up? Blade, no blade, it's all the same. We can't beat her. Not anymore. We can. You're just a quitter. I want to see. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. The chamber's walls are painted in blood. A deep, sickening red that drips down in clotted streams onto the charred corpses that make up its floor. This place reeks of torment, of ripped skin and burning bone. The princess stands in its centre, muscles flayed and bare and weeping, draped in a tattered dress of her own skin. Her heart beats from its place in her open chest. Do you know what I'm going to do to you? There's not so much a moment of hesitation before she steps forward. Her chains pull taut, holding fast as she strains against them. The cuff around her wrist and then, with a nauseating sound, the skin tears. It plops to the ground. She is loose, and she is coming for you. What can we even do against someone like her? She has Stop that. We can win. We just have to lose our fear. You'll try, and that's what I've been so excited for. Let's hurt each other. Your heart free of fear, you charge towards the princess, your eyes locked on each other, both of you prepared to lay down your very essence in one blow. It's now or never. Let's make it a beautiful blaze of glory. With a horrifying squelch. You are unwound. I hope you weren't planning on dying. We're going to make this last forever. Huh. I feel cold. I've never felt cold before.
She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? He is. Does that mean the world ended? The world didn't end. We're still here. Come on. We just need to keep going. Figures the world would end and leave us with all this nothing. I'm begging you, don't do this. It's different now. It feels... I don't know. Final. Screw the mirror! We just need to find the princess! I don't want to look at us. This... This doesn't feel right. It feels... different. Final. Screw the mirror! We just need to find the princess! I don't want to look at us. Something finds me in the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. Yes, nerves and fibers to feel the worlds beyond, perspectives to make my own. This one is desecration. She placed the weight of her agony on you. Yet it is she who unwound herself. But there is passion and empathy in her misery. She will make for a burning heart. Do not mourn her. She has finally found peace. I know only that they are. I have only just now stirred to consciousness. I could not have trapped you here, and I too yearn to be free. You are familiar, but you are not me. I feel sadness, longing, hope as I witness you. Nothing, as we are, but I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives, so that I may be whole. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin, you're here to slay her. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. Does it? Are you a monarch? Good. As long as you remain focused on your goal, you make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about.
the interior of the cat. The blade is your imp. The door to the basement, her voice. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. How many times do I have to tell you how dangerous letting her out of here would be before it finally sinks in? Wait, really? You're here to rescue me? I, I was starting to think I'd be stuck down here forever. Come downstairs. I want to see the face of my rescuer. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. I can't believe you're here. I've been waiting for something like this to happen forever. I hope you brought something to deal with these chains. Don't do it. If she gets out of those chains, we're all one step closer to the end. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Maybe there's some way to break the chains? Or if that doesn't work, I guess we can always cut me out of them. She offers the suggestion with almost complete nonchalance. If we were stuck down here long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out if it meant we could finally be free. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you, the clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. <sighs> Fine. Against your better judgement, you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Her limb falls to the ground and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, 
blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Stop that. Something's come over you, hasn't it? You know you don't have to do this, right? Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! The blade! Move the blade! As your body remains frozen in stubborn resistance, the princess takes a cautious step forward. We both know this isn't you. She nervously reaches towards you and takes the blade from your infuriatingly rigid hands. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I'll try to be quick. She plunges it into your chest, tearing through flesh and sinew. It is agony. But you aren't dead yet. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Stay strong. We can tough it out until it's done. For her sake. For her sake? Don't you start pretending that dying a painful death is some sort of heroic gesture. The two of you have literally doomed everyone. Whatever. She sinks the blade into your chest again and again and again, and you feel every inch of burning pain that slices its way into your body. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! She doesn't know how to use a knife, does she? Apparently not, though it doesn't matter how sloppy her knife work is, does it? A stab wound is still a stab wound, and it won't be long before you bleed out. With one last thrust of the knife, your legs give out beneath you. You collapse to the floor, your blood pooling around you, your limbs unresponsive. The princess stares down at your ruined chest as tears carve rivulets of pink down her blood-spattered cheeks. It can't just end like this, right? Oh, that's rich coming from you. As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. The two of everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path, you're here to slay her. My tricks. What on earth are you talking about? We just met for the first time. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Yes, he didn't approve of us last time, did he? If we're going to save our beloved, we'll have to be sneaky about it. Our beloved? Yes, you'll have to be very sneaky about your intentions if you're going to try and save the princess. Ah, so all of the cards are on the table. Then you should know that we and the princess are in love, and the four of us will be foiling any and all assassination attempts you've got in the works. We'll see about that. Whatever you do, just be sure to ignore him specifically. It sounds like he's the sort who'd sacrifice the whole world for a peck on the cheek. What can I say? A world without love is a world that isn't worth saving. A warning before she will lie. We already told you we're not playing along with your little game. It's your lies that can't be trusted. Her beauty is the only thing in the world we can believe in. I think we've already been over this. I'm pretty sure he just likes the sound of his own voice. I do. 
but I also speak from the heart. My passions are too great to be stifled. They must be ex- Sure, yeah, your passions are strong and all, but not everyone needs to hear them. Some things are better kept quiet. Don't pay their bickering any mind. Focus on the task ahead. The interior of the cabin is clean and elegant, its stone walls draped in fine threaded tapestries, a prison befitting a royal prisoner. The only furniture of note is an ornate wooden table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, uh, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. I'm sure the princess would tell us there was a mirror if she were up here. In which case she'd be lying to you because, again, there isn't a mirror. That's a great idea. We have to make sure we're looking our best before we save her. We shouldn't waste time preening. But if he is lying about the mirror, it might be important. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes, there is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would it even do? You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago. And now it's gone. Pity. We could have a feather out of place and now we'll never know. We can't gallantly sweep her off her feet if we have a feather out of place. You take the blade. I suppose if- Hopefully it doesn't. There's no use- door to the bed, but it's still a stone base. A soft voice. Hello? Is someone there? Her voice. It's somehow even more beautiful than last time. I can hear wedding bells already. I've held my tongue till now, but you're taking this a little too far. We barely even know the princess. We can still do right by her without all this over-the-top fawning. Yes, for everyone's sake, you're not in love. <sighs> Just remember, that her charms are all part of the manipulation. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around- My love! We're here to rescue you from your unjust and foul imprisonment. You know she can't hear you, right? She may not be able to hear my words, but surely she can hear my spirit. Oh, your spirit's plenty loud, all right. It's you, my dashing hero. I was so worried you wouldn't come back. Did you hear that? She said we're dashing. And she called us a hero. Flattery really goes a long way with the two of you, doesn't it? Waiting for you to come back. I didn't want to believe your ravings back in the woods, but this is next to incontrovertible evidence. You've been here before. That's right, villain. And you killed us. Well, she killed us. Only because he made us try and kill her, it was self-defense. Our beloved's hands remain unstained by cruelty. And you've died before. So an entire world has been damned to oblivion. I'd really hoped I'd be the first, but... What's done is done. We damned a whole world. But everything reset. Nothing resets, you're just somewhere else. And you can't keep hopping between worlds forever. Especially not without leaving a trail of incomprehensible devastation behind you. <sighs> this is horrible. Horrible for you, maybe. But we've been given another opportunity to sweep her off her feet and treat her like the lady she is. Now, hold on. If she actually ended a world, are you sure we want to do this? Are you sure we want to rescue her? We never saw a world end. And now I'm even more certain that we must chase our heroic and romantic destiny than I've ever been. I shan't let anyone convince us otherwise. 
Are you listening to him? He's lost it. Don't let him distract you. Just do your job. I don't know. Was I supposed to have ended the world? Would that have made you happy? Isn't that just like our darling princess? She wants to make us happy. My heart melts further with every word that passes through her beautiful lips. Are you listening to her? That's a confession. Then I didn't end the world. See? She didn't confess anything. She is innocence itself. Um, not so sure. Rescue her? What are you talking about? Did you forget that she's a world-ending monstrosity? And even if you wanted to unleash her onto the world, despite the complete moral disaster that would be, you'd have to get her out of those chains. Good luck with that. Don't you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her out with ease. No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. If her hand could just slip out of the chains, why hasn't she done it already? Because we've yet to present her with her freedom. I'm not sure I follow. Would you rather believe me, a passionate heart guided by love and my own good nature? Or would you rather believe the devil on your shoulder who tells you what you can and cannot do? I think I'd rather believe in facts. Ah, so you're one of those empiricists. One of us has to be. Then let me show you a brand new truth. Narrator, we courageously step forward and free our beloved from her bindings. No, I can't let you do that. If you take another step towards the princess, I'll... Yes. Not on my watch, villain. My passions contain titanic depths, and if you try anything that might harm our dearest, I will end our life without a second thought. You wouldn't. I would. I'd listen to him if I were you. He has a lot of strong feelings. And doesn't the world end if we don't stop her? <sighs> you approach the princess and gingerly slide her hand from her bindings. That shouldn't have worked. I'll be damned. We're doomed. I can't believe it. But I guess I have to. I told you. There's no life more worth living than that of a true believer. I'm free, and you're not trying to kill me this time. Thank you. Thank you so much. The princess jumps up and smothers you in a joyful embrace. Ugh. Are you sure you want to do this? Just one slip of the wrist and your pristine blade is buried in her back, and everyone out there is saved. Is that a threat? You know what we'll do if you try it. You're going to regret this. What do we do now? Let me guess. End the world? Spoken with the rank cynicism of someone who has never felt love in his heart. I don't actually know. Nobody's ever asked me what I wanted before. She doesn't even know what she wants. You may have had her all wrong. What if this whole thing is just a misunderstanding? What if she doesn't want to end the world? You're so gullible. Is the only thing you've ever doubted the actual truth? I think I want to leave. And I The princess closes her eyes in deep reflection. And then she shrugs. I don't know. What do you want to do? Perfect. As the princess takes your hand in hers, you let your blade tumble uselessly to the floor, and with it tumbles the last hope for the entire world. We have each other. We don't need the world for our happy ending. I like to think that you do, actually. Look, I have my doubts, but the choice has been made and this is happening. You don't have to mope about it. 
I will mope about it, because moping is the only recourse you love-blind fools have left me with. You and the princess walk up the stairs hand in hand. Ugh, look at the way she's smiling at you. She doesn't have to be so happy about this. And what happens after we walk up the stairs? Let's see. Oh, isn't that interesting? The door slams in your face and the lock clicks. That's a familiar move. Did I do that last time? Then you should know that you won't be able to leave. Oh no! Did someone lock us in here? That's not fair! We're supposed to leave now. She's right. It isn't fair. But the unfairnesses of the world are no match for the strength of true love. Enough with this true love nonsense. You just met her! Of course you wouldn't understand. Our passions run deeper than anything you have ever known. Are you listening to this? You don't have to go along with the every whim of that delusional voice. I'm just along for the ride at this point. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Like a pair of teenagers in love, you and the princess place your hands on the door together. Blech. And the lock clicks and the door creaks open. Are you kidding me? I told you our love was insurmountable. You and the princess make your way upstairs. Her freedom and the world's ruin are just a few moments away. If you don't mind, I'm going to fix myself a drink before you ruin everything. If I'm about to see the end of the world, I'd rather not see it sober. That's the way out. We're going to leave together, just like you wanted. Yes, I suppose you are going to do that, aren't you? You cross the room, opening the door to the cabin. And then you step outside. Our happy ending at last. We did it! What should we do now? Where did everything go? Where did he go? Oh, is it gone? I hadn't noticed. I was too busy staring deep into our beloved's eyes. I'm cold. Is being happy supposed to be so cold? She's cold. Quick, our feathers. Pluck them all and weave her a coat worthy of a princess. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And is that a mirror? Why is it here? Why now? What is that supposed to mean? Whatever awful thing I felt before, it feels so much worse now. Do it then. End us all before I die of a broken heart. Flickering lights in empty cityscapes become pockets of vitality and movement. I am more than I was before. Whenever you are ready, I will wipe your slate clean once again. There is still much to be seen. Neither of us know the depths of our being. Perhaps at the end of this, I will be the one to kill you. Or perhaps we will leave this place together and find new horizons to discover. Those paths lead to worlds you've already seen and to perspectives I have already made my own. They are useless to us now inaccessible. The only paths of value are those that are yet untread. Why wouldn't 
I be kind to you? You are the only thing I know that isn't me. I await your return, but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. We will meet again. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the base, you're here. Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody, I mean, maybe some. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. That's the spirit. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. A warning. Before she will lie. We're not going to go through. Ignore him. The interior of the cabin is all the blade is your. You take. Her voice. Who's there? She sound. Don't let it fool. Good. You're still listening to reason. She's so coldly focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? You step forward. Your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh, no talking then. Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. Oh, this is it, isn't it? I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming. But I have to wonder, do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? It's like she's convinced she can't die. Yes, even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and well. But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago, that arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? Yes, exactly. It's over. With your work done, you make your way back up the stairs, closing the door to the basement behind you. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? You did kill someone. 
Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only, a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of some place far away. What happened? Everyone is fine. It's just that you and the cabin are now far away from them. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. What's done is done. And there's no going back now. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. Time passes. You can't be sure if it's days, or months, or years, or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Psst. Hey. We're not just going to stay here forever, right? I do, but you're probably not going to like it. The blade. We can use the blade to get out of this. I can hear everything you say, little voice. There's only one thing it would want you to use that blade on, and I'm afraid that thing is you, dear hero. He's right. It's the only way out. Do you hear that? It wants to take this happiness away from you. It wants this wonderful place to end. Do you not? There's more for us to do, and the only way for us to do it is to take that blade and use it. Don't you dare. <sighs> Thank you. I made this happy little place for you. Is this not a good enough reward for saving the world? An eternity of bliss? You... you... ingrate? Fine. Whatever. For the first time since time stopped meaning anything, you throw open the door to the basement and walk down the stairs. The princess's body is dust and bones, though the blade you used to slay her is still as pristine as the day you first held it. You pick up the blade, you stab yourself, and you die. The end. Nice knowing you. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. You're here to sleep. A terrible sense of- If he doesn't remember what happened, that's fine. Well, if for what- It hasn't. Or if it has, I certainly haven't been a part of it. Like I said, we've just met for the first time, you and I. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power. She won't be a problem. The interior of the cabin is cold, a soft odour of dirt permeating the air. Cobwebs flutter in the corners. You can hear wind whistling outside, banging the shutters against the windows. The only furniture of note is an elegant antique table with a pristine blade perched on the edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. It feels like no one's been here for a long, long time. Like I've been saying, She's dead. We killed her already. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. Who cares if there's a mirror? Let's just go into the basement and find her body so we can be done with this.
As do I. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago, and now it's gone. Let's not spend much longer worrying over it. Clearly it's not even important enough to be acknowledged. The door to the basement groans open, revealing an old banister and a creaky wooden stairwell. Everything is coated in a thick layer of dust, and you can feel it settle into your lungs as you breathe in the stale air. The very building itself feels dead. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. The room below is silent. Nobody's here, naturally. As much as I appreciate the optimism, you shouldn't be so sure. I guess we'll just have to go down and see. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body, lying in a heap on the floor, its wrist still bound to the wall by a thick chain. Okay, she's definitely dead. It's just like I told you. Before you have a chance to finish your thought, the top of a head appears from underneath the floor. Two deep-set eyes stare up at you, followed by a mischievous, skeletal grin. And finally, the rest of the body floats up to join the head. Wait, this isn't right. What's going on here? A ghost Oh. Wow. How absolutely terrifying. What's a ghost supposed to do to us? Oh, it's you. Hiya, Keller. I was hoping to see you again. I have some issues with how our last meeting went. The princess drifts across the room into your orbit, gently running her fingers across your shoulders and down your neck as she circles you. Her touch is cold and ethereal. Formless, yet real enough that her icy fingertips send shivers dancing across your skin. So she has a body. And she's right there. We could probably grab her and kill her again. If we wanted to. We don't even need a blade. She looks fragile enough to me. I see you don't have that annoying knife anymore. So, does that mean you regret what you've done? Are you here to apologize and make nice? Beg for absolution, maybe? Because I might be interested in seeing a little begging. Are we putting this to a vote? Because personally, I'd prefer if we didn't die again. If that's what it comes down to, that's what it comes down to. But I don't see the point of offing ourselves just yet. Oh, that's sweet of you to offer. But killing yourself wouldn't help either of us. It would seem that everyone here is in agreement except for you. I shouldn't have to tell you that you shouldn't kill yourself. So please, try to keep your suicidal tendencies in check. I just want to go home. And just, where is home, I wonder? I don't know where home is. I just know it isn't here. But I can feel it calling to me from someplace far away. Wherever I'm supposed to be, it's out there. How specific. And how convenient for her. You see what she's doing, right? She's suggesting that the only way you can rid yourself of her would be to let her out. Which, in case you haven't been listening, will spell the end of the entire world. To 
too little, too late. But you can, you still, can make still make things, things right. right. She's not in a position to bargain with us. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. We don't have to do anything, but maybe we should. We did kill her. Wouldn't it be the moral thing to help her now that we have another chance? When a hero slays a monster, does he apologize to it? No. So don't try to make things right. She was going to end the world. You didn't do anything wrong. Aside from, apparently, killing yourself, and that doesn't have much to do with her. I just want the same thing I've always wanted, to go home, but this place won't let me go, at least, not alone. I've tried, before you came back to me, I explored every inch of this place, even the spaces between the walls, but I never found a way out, I always wound up right back here. Maybe we should just leave? If she can't get out on her own, then why do we have to do anything? We could probably walk out right now and everything would be fine. Hasn't got out and can't get out are two very different things. But it'd be dull anyway. It's more interesting if we make a choice. But you can come and go as you please, can't you? So, let me hitch a ride. After all, you Absolutely not. Is she asking if she can possess us? She is. But I hope I don't need to explain why you can't let that happen. It would be catastrophic if she managed to escape this place. And if you let her in, there is very little anyone could do to stop her. Would she be able to see us if we went along with it? Now isn't that an interesting thought? We could finally bring her face to face with him. I wonder what she would have to say to the one who wants her dead so, so badly. <sighs> you won't like how things play out if you go down this path. The princess swims through the air in front of you pausing for a brief moment as her dark-rimmed eyes stare deeply into yours. You're really You're trying, trying to make it up to me, aren't you? Thanks for being a pal, killer. I mean it. What are you doing? Don't just let her in. How many times do I have to tell you? <sighs> See you soon. She rushes forward and then she's gone. A sharp chill spreads across your body. It starts in your chest, a freezing numbness flowing out from your heart all the way down your limbs, your mind growing cloudy and confused as it settles over your very soul. I'm not sure I like this. C can we get a do-over? I'm afraid it's too late to stop now. The numbness gives way to a stabbing pain, your muscles twitching and convulsing violently, each involuntary movement causing more waves of agony to ripple across your body. You collapse to the floor, and everything goes dark. Come on, you. You've got to get up. I know everything feels... heavy right now, but we still have to get out of here. Your eyes flick back open as you get your bearings, your vision swimming as... So this is what it's like to be you, huh? Disembodied voice narrating your every move? So, it doesn't work like that for you? Clearly it doesn't. Or she wouldn't have commented on it. All these shards of broken glass on the floor. Are they also supposed to be you? Hey, I'm not a shard of broken glass, I'm... It's okay. You can finish your thought. I'm... a voice? I'm me, is what I am. Who cares what we are? We exist. That's all that matters. You don't have to fight. We'll all be out of here soon. No, it matters. What we are matters. If I'm a shard of broken glass, then that raises some questions about certain other voices in here too. 
I'm clearly the same thing you are. They're not listening to me. Do they not listen to you either? No, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about him. You don't need to know what I am. You just need to know that I'm different from you. More important. So, you're the one who pulled the strings and made me dead. I can tell you don't belong here. You're barely even there. Like the shape of something left behind. You're more of a... memory than a person. That's rude. You're kind of like me, actually. I'm just going to ignore her. You push yourself off the ground. The princess is nowhere to be seen. Because I'm in here with all of you. Everybody knows that. I'm setting the stage. The room is empty because you made a spiteful, idiotic, and all-round foolish decision. You don't have to let him get to you. You're better than that. You're starting to make things right. <sighs> this is infuriating. Just whatever you do, you can't leave this place. It's not too late to fix this. Probably. It's okay. We're almost out of here. Just take it one step at a time and everything will be fine. Everything won't be fine if you listen to her. One way or another, this is all going to end. Wouldn't it be nice if he ends with it? Wouldn't that be nice? There's only one way to find out. <sighs> Your legs, weary with the weight of the princess's spectral form, and clumsy with the cold that still pervades them, stumble towards the stairs. I'm just trying to get home. You don't have to act like it's the end of the world. But that's exactly what you leaving this place is going to be. You don't know that. I do. Wait, if she has a home to go back to, doesn't that mean that her leaving won't end the world? It doesn't mean that at all. It could mean that wherever her home is, it's outside of the world. Yeah, but it has to be somewhere, doesn't it? And if it's somewhere, then it's part of the world. I suppose it's all a matter of perspective. Where does the world end and something else begin? Does the destruction of one open a door to another? Or is it the same world reborn? Against the backdrop of the inane conjecture of meaningless little voices, your body continues its ascent up the stairs, staggering through the open door. For how much you hate her, you aren't doing a whole lot to stop us from leaving this place. Maybe the bossy one doesn't actually hate me. Maybe he even likes me. Or maybe he just knows that he's been in the wrong. Maybe he's trying to make amends too. Not at all. I'll have you know that I do hate you, and I will continue to hate you for as long as I am able. It's just the weight of it all. It's too much for me to do anything other than describe and dictate. And whine. This body wasn't made to hold you and the princess. If you want to renege on your cataclysmically terrible decision a minute ago, well, you're the only one that can make that happen. You continue slowly to the door, your feet like lead dragging across the floorboards, growing heavier with each step. We're so close. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If we get out of here, I won't even care that you murdered me anymore. You lift your shaking hand and rest it on the door handle. Was exhaustion really the best you could muster up? It's over. There's no use stalling. Let's see what happens next. Shit. But exhaustion wasn't enough, was it? The handle clicks as you twist it. And then the door groans open. Collapse to the ground, you and the princess, free from the confines of the cabin. As you exhale from the effort, you look up and see. Uh, yes? Nothing. He's gone, and so is everything else. So we did slay him after all. He had it coming, I suppose. But what about us? Are we just stuck here in nowhere forever? Did taking her out of the cabin really end the world? We're still here. Yeah, but that thing you said earlier, are we not part of the world anymore? Are we in some world that exists after the world ends, or 
on top of the other world, but not in it, or have we never been part of it? Okay, I've heard enough from these two. Let's see if I can pop out. You actually freed me, didn't you? I'm a son. Thanks for giving me a second chance, Claire. Don't mention it. I think this is where I need to be. She's gone. Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? I would have kept them in the dark if I were you. What is that supposed to mean? Whatever awful thing I felt before, it feels so much worse now. you can stand to be you. You are like me, even if you have chosen not to look at the corners of you that do not fit, even if you have chosen to ignore the brilliant contours of your soul. It changes me, but it doesn't make me worse. Nor does it make me care for you any less. Does it make you worse? Do you resent me? It will, in time. But you still have a ways to go before we are done. Know that I hold no malice for you. time for us to meet again. You're on a path. You're here.